Travis. Hello, Wayne. This is our seventh video lecture for the probability graduate level class. And today I want to conclude uh, a discussion about discrete random variables. And I want to move to continuous random variables. And so the way that we're going to conclude the discussion about the discrete random variables is looking at the last type of the specific discrete random variables. And we're not going to prove very much about it, but just state some facts about it, uh, define it, state some facts about it, and do an example. And so <clears throat> this last discrete random variable that I'm going to look at is called the negative binomial. And uh, here's its definition. So uh, suppose a uh, newly experiment. is performed independently number of times until the <coughs> rth success Then, uh, let, I shouldn't say then, let's just say let, X count the number of times the experiment was performed. number of times until the R success occurs. Then X is called A negative binomial random variable. So a negative binomial random variable is much like uh, a geometric random variable, except <clears throat> for geometric, we keep performing the um, experiment until the first success, but here we perform the experiment until we have the rth success, which where r is some fixed number. <clears throat> what I want to tell you is facts. We're going to let x be negative binomial random variable with parameters I'm going to write it this way R and P R is the number of successes that you're looking for P is the chance of success in each individual trial. Remember the individual trials are independent from one another. Then, the first thing we're going to write down as a fact is that the PMF of X is, so it's F of X equals. Okay, so uh, here's what happens. We know we keep doing the experiment until we get the R of the success. Uh, so that means that on the last time we got success. So the chance that you have uh, uh, X or R successes uh, is P to the R. Okay? And then it should be 1 minus P to the X minus R. Okay, that's what it should be. 
And then um, the rest of the tribes. And here, um, what we know is that um, there were uh, R minus 1 successes, number of successes, in the first X minus 1 tribes. And so the number of ways to place those successes is X minus 1 choose R minus 1. And so that is the uh, PML where, where uh, <clears throat> X is equal to R, R plus 1. So R is the number of successes we need. So you need to do the experiment at least R times. R plus 1, R plus 2, forever. 2, the expected value of a negative binomial is R over P. Now remember, I said that the negative binomial is a uh, generalization of the uh, geometric. The expected value for geometric was 1 over P, you might recall. But here, the geometric is a special case of the uh, negative binomial where R for the geometric is equal to 1. And thirdly, the variance of X, well, that's equal to R times 1 minus P all over P squared. So I'm not going to prove any of those facts to you. They're, they're just facts that we're going to list. I did give some kind of indication of why the PMF is what it is. Let's look at the example, a variation of the example we had last time. Let's say a, a card is selected from a standard deck with suit is noted. card is returned to the deck. And the deck reshuffled. This process is done. So this is repeated until the fifth time a heart is selected. What we're going to do is we're going to let X count the number of cards chosen. Okay, let's look at the important characteristics here. First of all, let's note X is a negative binomial. With PMF of 
with parameters, I'll say. So R equal to 5, and P, the chance of success, is 1 4. The PML. is it's f of x is equal to so it's x minus 1 x varies okay r minus 1 that's going to be 5 minus 1 so that's just 4 p so that's 1 4 to the r that's 5 um, that's r and then here 3 4 so 1 minus p to the x minus r, okay? the x minus r is going to be um, here x minus five, okay? where um, x is equal to uh, five, six, seven, eight, forever. I just want to reiterate this because I forgot what I had written earlier. But the form is f of x is equal to x minus 1, the PML, r minus 1. And here it should be p to the r, I hope that's what I wrote, and then 1 minus p to the x minus r. That's what it is. So I hope that's what I put earlier. The expected value of x, that's p over r. I'm sorry, it's r over p. And that's going to be equal to 5 over 1 4, which equals to 20. So you expect to do the experiment 20 times to get your fifth part. And then the variance of x, we know what that's equal to. Uh, the variance of x is r times 1 minus p over p squared. So in this case, it's 5 times 3 fourths over 1 4. So I, I think we did this before. Uh, this is going to be equal to 5 times 3 uh, times, I think, uh, 4, and so that's 60. talk about a different type of random variable, and that is a continuous random variable. So that's all I want to say about discrete random variables. So here, <clears throat> a random variable x is said to be A continuous random variable if there exists, okay, if that's the symbol for there exists, a function. And I'll put a little bit. Such that for all that's symbolized by that, B subsets of R, the probability that big X is in B is equal to the integral over the set B of m of x dx. In this case, m of x is called the probability density function of 
and we abbreviate that PDF of X. Okay, um, so here, much like for a discrete random variable, associated to a continuous random variable is a function, f of x. It's defined on all of R. Okay? So this is defined on minus infinity to infinity. And what it has to do with it is that um, if you integrate f of x over a certain region, it gives you the probability that x is in that region. Out the values for x are in that region. And so, this beforehand for a discrete random variable, we had summations for discrete of f of x. Here, we're going to have integration for continuous uh, random variables. We should look at an example. <clears throat> Well, before we look at some examples, uh, let me give a fact. As you might expect, it's a very easy fact. Uh, the integral, oh, um, you know, I've made some mistakes. Let's go back here to my definition. There's a word missing. If there exists a non negative, sorry, a non-negative function, f of x, defined on minus infinity to infinity. Sorry about that. Please add that. Okay. Here's the fact that I wanted to do. That is, <clears throat> I wanted to list it. That is, um, if f of x is a PDF, then the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx equals to 1. It proves very easy. So here, note 1 is equal to the probability that x is an element of minus infinity to infinity. So wait just a second. x is a random variable. It takes outcomes of a uh, from a sample space, outcomes of a random, um, random experiment, and what it does, it yields out a number. So x always yields out a real number. So the chance that x is a real number is 100%. That's one. But by our definition of what the PDF is, um, this is uh, equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity. This is my d minus infinity to infinity, of f of x dx. So what we have is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx is equal to 1. That's what's been assigned. Okay. Okay, that's my proof. Okay. Um, it's facts that I will just list. The first is, right, well, we're going to let x be a continuous random variable. With PDF f of x. Then here's the first thing. One. The first thing is the probability that a is less than or equal to uh, x is less than or equal to b. Well, this is obvious fact is from the definition. It's integral from a to b. So that's a to b of f of x dx. So my x being the element of the closed interval from a to b, that's my b set b. You integrate over that, which is from a to b of f of x dx. And then part two, this is an interesting fact, but the probability for a continuous random variable to be equal to a particular number, well, that's equal to the integral from a to a of f of x dx, but that's known from calculus to be equal to zero. So the chance that a uh, continuous random variable is equal to a particular number is nothing. Zero.
Well, let's look at an example. And we have already seen this example before. And I'll write it up again and say, well, it's a discrete magnetic variable. I'm sorry, continuing magnetic variable. Uh, suppose a person will arrive at a bus stop Between 5 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. With each time, so this is something I'm sure means instant, being equally like. Let X be the amount of time after 5 p.m. that a person arrives. Okay. Then, so this was this example. Then, X is a continuous random variable. And I'm going to list its PDF. Discrete random variables, we talked about the expected value. So here we're going to talk about the continuous random variables, their expected value. So as a definition, if, if x is a continuous random variable, Then the expected value of x denoted by e of x is given by e of x is equal to the interval from minus infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx, where f of x is the PDF of x. So it's very similar to what we had for a discrete random variable, except now we're integrating instead of summing. We'll do an example of computing expected value. And of course, when we say expected value, we mean mean, that's another name for it, as well as the average.
So, um, as an example, consider the previous bus stop. So what we had X being the amount of time after 5 p.m. that a person that, that person arrived at the bus stop. So here uh, we're going to find the expected value of X. Well, before I do this problem, this should be something we can do. I mean, you think on average, what time does the person show up when they're equally likely to show up at any time between 5 and 5:30? Well, for every uh, that answer seems like their average should be around 515 in the middle. And you think about it, well, they show up 515 as many uh, times as any other time, but like if they show up any time around 515, let's say they show up around 510, they're going to show up at 510 just as many times as they would at 520, and those average out to uh, 515. So 15, at 15 minutes after 5 should be average. Well, let's see if our uh, mathematics um, displays that type of thinking, and it will. So note, the expected value of x should be equal to the interval minus infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx. Now this is uh, defined over the whole real number line, but what I'm going to tell you is that f of x, and I'll write this down one time, is non-zero only in a little chunk of the whole real number line. So here I'll break this up into an interval from minus infinity to zero of x times f of x dx plus an interval from zero to infinity, oh, I'm sorry, to 30 of x times f of x dx plus an interval from 30 to infinity of f of x times f of x, x times f of x dx. And the reason I can break up this interval into these three intervals is by property of interval. <clears throat> and now this is the interval from minus infinity to zero of x times zero of dx, plus here is the interval from zero to 30 of x times, was it one over 30? That was this PDF, uh, dx over this region, plus here is the interval from zero to 30, I'm sorry, from 30 to infinity, that's what it says, of x times 0 dx. Well, this is the standard rule of 0 over region. If you remember from calculus, um, the integral is supposed to represent the area of the curve between the function f of x, if it's non-negative, and the x-axis. Well, this there is no area uh, because, uh, between this function 0 and the x-axis, which is y equals 0. So there is no area, so this part is 0. Plus this interval from 0 to 30 of x. Well, I can do this. So finding an antiderivative of this guy, it's going to be 1 over 30 times x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 30. Plus, and here this again is going to be 0. Let me finish it up over here. So that's equal to um, what would be using the fundamental theorem of calculus is 30 to be squared over, uh, well, this would be 30 times 1 half. Um, so here, one of the 30s cancels out with the 30 at the bottom, leaving a 30 times 1 half, and that indeed is equal to 15, which is what we expected. So that's good. Now, as we had before with discrete random variables, we're going to have a definition for uh, the expected value of a function of a continuous random variable. So here we're going to let x uh, be a continuous random variable. With uh, 
PDF f of x. So I don't know what it is, but I'm symbolizing it with f of x. Uh, and let g of x be a function of x. Then the expected value. G of x is denoted by E of G of x and given by E of G of x is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of G of x times f of x dx. Now, um, this is an improper integral. We've been using improper integrals without me saying it here in this lecture. Um, so sometimes we do a limit as t goes to minus infinity or some other dummy variable involved. Uh, maybe r goes to infinity. Uh, but I might skip over some of those details, even though they are uh, formally what we do in calculus. Well, let's look at an example. Let's consider that bus stop example. Where x is the amount of time After 5 p.m. that the person arrives at the bus stop, okay. find, so here I'm going to find uh, the expected value of x squared minus 2x plus 1. Well, to do this problem, let's just note the expected value of x squared minus 2x plus 1 is really equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared minus 2x plus 1, that's g of x, times f of x, dx. But again, f of x is uh, non zero only over a little range of this. So I'm going to say, well, look, this is the same thing as the little range where f of x is non zero, it's from 0 to 30 part where it is zero would contribute nothing. The integral would be zero. So this is x squared minus 2x plus 1 times 1 over 30 dA, where f of x is defined to be 1 over 30 over that region. And so what this is in uh, being 1 over 30, we can take out the constant that was in integration. And then the antiderivative for each one of these would be x to the third of this term over 3 minus it would be 2x squared over 2, so I'll just write down x squared, and then plus x, and I need to evaluate that using the fundamental theorem of calculus from 0 to 30. Remember that part? Fundamental theorem of calculus. That's equal to 1 over 30 times 30 um, cubed over 3 minus 30 squared plus 30. And when I did this, it seems awfully big, but I got this number. I got uh, 6721. I did this previously. 
But you can check it out, make sure that's correct. Okay, the next thing I want to define is really a recall. Okay, so I think I did this in general in a previous video, but here I'll just remind us. If x is a continuous random variable, continuous in parentheses, because really it doesn't matter, then the variance of a is denoted by bar of x and given by the variance of x is equal to the expected value of the quantity x minus the expected value of x to be squared. That's where we are. Excuse me. And we had said that earlier. And so uh, what I wanted to uh, just remind you of is that's our definition. It implies when we have continuous random variable. And then we have a fact that helps us compute. So our fact, it's the same one we had before, to the fact that I had before, I proved for just discrete random variables. So now I'm going to prove it for continuous. It says if x is a continuous random variable, then Expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to b squared. So we're going to prove this in the case when x is a continuous random variable. So we're going to let x be a continuous random variable. Then, by definition, the variance of x is equal to the expected value of the quantity x minus the expected value of x to be squared. Well, that's equal to the expected value of x squared minus 2x times the expected value of x uh, plus the expected value of x to be squared. And don't forget, the expected value of x is a constant. And so now using the previous definition we have about the expected value of a function of x, the expected value of g of x, what this is going to be equal to sorry, this is going to be equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared minus 2x times the expected value of x plus the expected value of x to b squared times f of x dx, where f of x is the PDM. And so this is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity. I'm going to distribute the f of x dx. We get x squared f of x dx uh, minus 2x times the expected value of x times f of x dx plus the expected value of x to be squared times f of x dx.
Um, and I shouldn't have V8s everywhere. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what happened to me. We distribute, distribute the F of X, and that's what we get. Okay, now I can break this up into three intervals. So here's an interval from minus infinity to infinity of X squared F of X DX. Minus an interval from minus infinity to infinity of 2x, expected value of x, f of x dx, plus an interval from minus infinity to infinity of the expected value of x, v squared, from f of x dx. Well, this is nothing more by, uh, than the expected value of x squared. And the way, the way I'm getting this is I'm just remembering what the definition of the expected value of g of x is. So here my g of x is nothing more than x squared, it's exactly this. Minus, I can take out the two times expected value of x because those are constants. Minus infinity to infinity of x, f of x dx. And here, I'll, play, I'll take out the constant, the expected value of x to be squared. I'm just left with the interval from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx. This is still the expected value of x to b squared, the expected value of x squared, I should say, minus 2 times the expected value of x. And now this integral is nothing more than the expected value of x. And then plus the expected value of x squared, I'm sorry, the expected value of x to b squared, times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx by property of the PDF. That's equal to 1, so it's times 1. Well, that's just equal to the expected value of x squared minus 2 times the expected value of x to b squared uh, plus the expected value of x squared. So that gives us the result. The expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to b squared. That's what we're hoping to get. That is what we got. There's the proof. Let us look at an example. And let's stay with the same example we have been stating. That's the bus stop example. So someone might say, consider the bus stop example again, where x is the amount of time after 5. person shows up. Okay. Somebody might say, find the variance of x. And so, to find the variance of x, here's what I do. I know the variance of x is really equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to b squared we did the expected value of x before, remember we found it to be 15 so what we need is the expected value of the quantity x squared Uh, note the expected value of the point of, of x squared is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared times f of x dx, which is equal to, and our f of x was that 1 over 30 only between 0 and 30, and everywhere else it was 0. So this is the same thing as the integral from 0 to 30 of x squared times 1 over 30 dx. 
That ends up being 1 over 30 times x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 30. So we stick in 30, see what we get. We we'll subtract from it what we get when we stick in 0. That's fundamental theorem of calculus. So here this is 1 over 30 times 3 times 30 squared minus 30 cubed minus 1 over 30 times 0 cubed over 3. And so let's see what that is. Let's see, one of the 30s here will cancel. And so we're left with 900 over 3 minus 0. I think that's 300. So the variance of x is going to be equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to b squared, which is equal to 300 minus 15 to b squared. That's 300 minus 225, and that's equal to 75. So that's the variance for this problem. Okay, the last thing I want to do today is I'm going to start talking about some specific continuous random variables. Much like we talked about uh, some specific discrete random variables. And the first continuous type of random variable we're going to talk about is called a uniform random variable. So here's its definition. A uh, continuous Random variable is said to be uniformly distributed if, um, and here we'll just say a uniform. If um, the PDF, oh, I should call it something. Let's call it X. Insert it. If the PDF of X is M of X is equal to 1 over B minus A. If x is an element of a to b and zero otherwise for some a less than b. Okay. Uh, uniform random variables. Are used when this is going to sound kind of funny so this is a kind of slang say in the time period everything's equally like uh, each region of equal lengths. Okay, so that's what I have. I want to make sure I did turn this first of all. Uh, that was my definition for a uh, uniform random variable. Okay, and then I had that kind of idea of what it's used for, everything being equally likely. And I would like to do uh, uh, 
few things about the informed and distributed random variable. The first thing we do is, as fact, note um, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx equal to, for a uniform and distributed random variable, really should be a to b of 1 over b minus a dx. That's equal to um, 1 over b minus a x is an antiderivative. Evaluate from a to b. So when I stick in b, I get b over b minus a. Minus what I get when I stick in a, which is a over b minus a. That ends up being b minus a over b minus a, which of course is 1. So we just shown that if you integrate the PDF for a continuous, sorry, a uniform and distributed random variable, you get 1. Now, the next thing I want to show is that the expected value, uh, so here's a fact. Let's write that. If x is a uh, uniform random variable, with parameters A and B. Okay, some sense for you there. Then the expected value of X is equal to B plus A over 2. Let's prove that. I'll just say on our example for the bus stop, A was 0, B was uh, 30. And our expected value we found was 15. 30 plus 0 over 2 is 15. So it works there. Let's see if we prove it. One more thing to do, and then that's this fact. 
fact if x is a uniform random variable then the variance of x It's equal to B minus A over 12. It's B minus A to B squared over 12, I think. Yeah, I think it's B. Let's check it out. Let's do the proof. So I'm going to find out by the proof. I forgot the fact. So here, uh, let's let x be uniformly distributed. With PDF, f of x is equaling to 1 over b minus a if x is an element from a to b. That's all I know about. Zero otherwise. That's what it means to be uniformly distributed. So the variance of x, well, I know in general, the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared by our formula minus the expected value of x to b squared. So I know what the expected value of x is, is b plus a over 2. What I've got to compute is the expected value of x squared. Let's just notice that the expected value of x squared is equal to the integral, I'll shorten it down, well, minus infinity to infinity of x squared times f of x dx, which is the same thing as the integral from a to b of x squared times 1 over b minus a dx, which is equal to x cubed over 3 times b minus a. Um, evaluate from a to b by the fundamental variance calculus. So that's equal to b cubed minus a cubed over 3 times b minus a. The top factors, then that b minus a, and then times b squared, I think it's plus a to b, uh, uh, plus plus uh, a squared all over 3 times b minus a. Let's check this out. b cubed, there's a b squared, uh, here's a minus a b squared, so they're going to cancel with each other. Here's a, a squared b, here's a minus a, a squared b, they cancel with each other. Yeah, that's what And then uh, the b minus a is canceled, so we're left with b squared plus a b plus a squared over 3. So, the variance of x, again, is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to b squared. Substituting for each one of these parts, here's what we're going to get. We're almost done. This is equal to b squared plus ab plus a squared over 3. Uh, and it's minus. And then remember, this was b plus a over 2. That needs to be squared. So we end up getting b squared plus ab plus a squared over 3. It's just algebra. Minus the quantity b squared plus 2ab plus a squared over 4. 
Okay, common denominator is 12. So here, I need to multiply this by 4. So it's 4b squared plus 4ab plus 4a squared minus, I need to multiply this by 3. So it's 3b squared uh, uh, plus, no, it'd be minus, 6ab minus 3a squared all over 12. Let's see what that's um, here I see a 4b squared minus a 3b squared. That's b squared. Here is a 4ab minus a 6ab, so that's minus 2ab. Uh, here is a 4a squared minus 3a squared, so that's a plus a squared all over 12. That ends up being uh, b minus a, that's what we call squared over 12. And that's what you see. And before I uh, conclude, that is right, okay? So before I conclude, let me just remind you that for the variance of the bus stop problem, we've got to answer 75. This would be 30 minus 0. That's 30. B squared is 900. 900 divided by 12. I think that's 75. So that's a good sign um, that that worked out because the bus stop problem is a uniformly distributed. Well, that's enough for today. I want to thank you very much for your time and patience.